All right, Corey. So at the end of this update, you also had mentioned that that we that we do have a role in this kind of battle that's that's playing out, and that now is the time to become the activists that help sort of shift the the narrative. If the narrative is being manipulated to such a degree that people are being encouraged to be afraid to give in to the idea that lockdowns are needed, that we have to be more controlled in a totalitarian system because of the the fearful entities or the fearful things that are going on. I assume that fear is one of the main things that we need to be activists against through having a better understanding of what's really going on and the history of what's actually happened on earth and that kind of thing. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. And, you know, the word is that the ETs have given us till 2027, 2028 to make this people of earth aware of them um, because they're going to start showing themselves around that time period. Um, so we have that aspect to it, but we also have people that are Alliance friendly uh, like David Grush and uh, 40 plus people working with him who have the full information that they want to disclose. They know that we're probably, probably going to be seeing some very disturbing things in the skies or in space. We're going to see uh, conflict here and there, um, especially when the Confederation comes in to start trying to defeat the Orion group. You know, we're going to see weird flashes by Jupiter and things that look like meteors crashing into Jupiter and, you know, things that are going to be difficult to explain or, or understand. They're starting to disclose things because you know, these whistleblowers, because they think it's the right thing to do. And they want to prepare us so we're not completely shocked when a lot of this stuff starts to transpire. So David Grush and them, a lot of people are, you know, very skeptical in the community or calling it controlled or partial disclosure. Well, yeah, we're not getting full disclosure. We're not on a timeline to get full disclosure before the solar event. It's not going to happen. Um, we're going to get stages of partial disclosure. And as each little partial disclosure bit comes out, we're going to have the Alliance trying to spin it in their direction, the Cabal and other different groups trying to spin it in theirs to completely scare the shit out of people um, so that they're on a war footing, that the whole civilization, civilization gets on a war footing against a threat. And they're you know, they're going to make it sound like this threat is incoming, but these ET groups have been on Earth with us for many, many thousands of years. And we're going to be, they're going to try to convince us that they're, some of them have been here, here and there, but that they're, they're coming in to take over and we need to get ready to fight against them when they've already taken us over. They've already been in control for thousands of years, the negative ET groups. So, you know, I think, and the disclosure community was completely infiltrated. Uh, civil wars happened within, you know, different content creators. Every, uh, and it discredited itself so badly that the Alliance friendly groups had no choice they couldn't send their people in to someone like Dr. Sala or even Stephen Greer or anyone because the community had completely, completely discredited itself through all of its horrible compromised behavior. So it is so bad. The Alliance is so pissed off at the disclosure movement and don't want to, they don't have anything to do with it that their real whistleblowers want to have anything to do with Greer, anyone in this community. They've completely rebranded, as I've said before, <clears throat> uh, disclosure. They, you know, UFOs are now UAPs, aliens or non-human intelligence, and the list goes on. And, you know, they're doing everything to release this information while also not wanting people to mentally tie it to the abduction phenomenon. They still want everyone to think that's some sort of mass hallucinative 
uh, hundredth monkey effect kind of phenomenon. Um, they don't want people saying, huh, these ETs that are coming to Earth are really coming here. So the abductees, their stories must be true. They don't want us to make that connection. So, um, you know, one of the things that Grush and his insiders are going to tell Congress and eventually the American people is that indeed um, some of these crashed UAPs um, have human remains on them. And they found uh, evidence of ongoing human experimentation being done on board the ships, areas for it to be done. Um, so it's going to come out that uh, people, uh, a certain percentage of people who claim to be abductees <clears throat> are real. Uh, there is a psychosis thing that goes on to where a lot of people who have had different traumas, uh, abuses and stuff somehow transform it into alien uh, abductions. Um, at any alien abduction meeting, there's going to be a certain percentage of them that fit that. Uh, and they're delusional people that look for a place to connect. There's a lot of that that goes on, but there's a percentage and a, a good percentage of the people who claim to be alien abductees who are really being abducted and experimented on through generational uh, abductions. And um, not all of those people survive, um, you know, and we have ETs that are, you know, the, the graves have been known to abduct, you know, entire villages in some of these third world countries to where it won't be reported or missed. Um, and of course, we have a lot of these weird stories going on in Peru which I'm told there's an element of truth to. Um, I mean, it's what makes more sense, a guy flying around in a jet pack with a bulletproof vest in the middle of the night through a bunch of trees in the jungle being shot at by villagers or what they say they saw. What makes more sense? Um, it's a ridiculous cover story. But... Uh, I've been talking to, I have a lot of connections in South America now, and there's a lot going on in the jungles uh, down there. So, um, and the gray aliens are are involved, uh, you know, in most of these types of things. Uh, are, the, are the militaries down there more aware that they need to be fighting against these things? Depends. There's like... Uh, certain parts of the military, higher secret parts of different militaries in these different countries know things, but the military itself, the general military is kept unaware of it. Sometimes they uh, guard areas where they know these bases are, and it looks like they're working for the ETs, but they're really just trying to keep people safe and trying to keep problems from occurring. Uh, from people going into areas they shouldn't be. Um, so like I said, as always, it's complicated. There's never uh, a one answer. So do you feel that Grush encountered some information that, like what you're describing, that that there's going to be open uh, things happening in the skies that could lead to more fearful scenarios? Is, does Grush have a sense of urgency in getting this more disclosed? I don't know exactly what Grush knows. I don't. Uh, I know that he is basically plowing the field for the people who do know stuff. And um, the main thing that they need and that one of the things that we could be doing right now is getting, you know, doing email campaigns and different things that you and I will talk about in the future to help back these guys up. And what they really need is the UAP whistleblower law to go through that they're playing with in Congress a little right now. If Congress passes that law, these 40 people will be dropping their information to Congress the next day they're ready. And once that happens, there are hundreds of thousands of people across this country that very seriously keep that oath that they took and that NDA that they signed, because if they don't, they know it's their ass. 
So once this UAP thing is signed, so many people will be able to open up and the information will, will, once we get to that point, it's other information will really start to flow. So that is necessary. And, you know, finding other ways of being activists to wake people up and give them information, not about blue avians, not about the Pleiadians, not about the Galactic Federation, you know, very, keep it simple, stupid, you know, very simple stuff uh, that's going on, uh, you know, that, that you can tie to the UAP disclosures, because right now people are more open than they've ever been. Um, and if you go in with all of this half religious, half disclosure kind of crap, you're going to do more harm than good uh, with them and their journey of awakening. So uh, we're going to have to be responsible, but we're going to have to act. You know, we can't just sit back and, you know, say it's unfolding the way it divinely should. You know, we're divinely put here to take part. So um, I think you and I are going to uh, do a course that's going to discuss being an activist and how to be an effective activist in this movement. Um, maybe we can redeem the disclosure movement in some way if enough people come together or not necessarily come together because it doesn't work, but if enough people decide that they're going to start working for whatever disclosure they can get. And we're going to get that through Grush and his people. So we need to get behind them and uh, become disclosure activists and not a disclosure community. Because a community is where all, I'm sorry, where all the bullshit happens, the gossiping, the this, the that, all the things that drag uh, uh, a movement down. You know, and if we keep it small groups of people doing their own little missions here and there or people by themselves, uh, we're going to be able, if they work as activists that are organized and have a plan, we can make it much more difference than we can uh, watching videos of people with sparkles in their eyes talking about the Galactic Federation has destroyed all of the eat bad ETs and all you got to do is sit back and smile, you know. that That's not disclosure. If you want actual disclosure, it is time. It is okay to have those beliefs. That is totally fine. It's your business. But when it comes to actually being a part of disclosure, you need to become an activist and start bringing um, some credibility back to the disclosure movement because it has lost it all. Um, but these people need support right now. And, um, and they also need us to be there to help spin the narrative away from the cabal's narrative of everything, you know, oh, we need more weapons in space. We need this. We need to take away more human rights so that we're all together as one. Am I still broken up? Okay, I think we're back now. The last thing you said was we need to come all together as one. Okay. Yeah, we need to come. Well, we don't need to come together as one is, is the point. Um, because humans are too corruptible in groups. Small cells of people are acting on your own. But we need to, you know, get it together and become a disclosure activist movement and not a disclosure storytelling circle um, and actually be part B disclosure. And that's uh, the only way we're going to really have disclosure, even if it's in little chunks, is to uh, back up the people outside of this community who are giving disclosures. Because I guarantee no new real disclosures are going to come out of this community uh, the Alliance and all of the real whistleblowers are avoiding it. Why the hell would they want to go through what I and other people have gone through in this community? They have a big enough battle to fight with the public. They don't need to fight a battle inside the community while trying to do it. So, you know, the community collapsed and failed. Now's the time for us to redeem and rebuild ourselves as not this big, uh, wacky community, but as disclosure activists. And the people that are interested in doing that can, uh, you know, take part in our webinar where we're going to give specifics and game plans. And, uh, you know, you can become disclosure. And, um, you know, Mike has some great experience uh, in that arena actually doing, uh, uh, 
not protests, demonstrations. But, you know, demonstrations, yeah. So we're going to go into more detail. He's going to share uh, some of his great experience in that regard. And we're going to discuss how this community can reorganize itself into a actual activist movement and do what it can to um, help those around us who are curious now because of the disclosures of people like David Grush. Yeah, there's an extreme hunger. It's like people have been starved all their lives of good information, just plugging into the mainstream consciousness, the mainstream education and media. And those people who are now willing to turn their eyes towards deeper truths are looking for good, solid truth that can allow them to re reshape their reality. And the, the old systems of programming are have, have just left people completely confused. And now, now there's a huge need for, for people to be very clear and concise and deliver just just the right seeds of, of what is needed for people to kind of keep taking keep peeling back to layers of the onion keep taking the next step to become more more useful in service along along a, a better path that would lead humanity in a, in a better direction um and, True. So and we, yeah and we also have the aspect of people right now have that have like not paid attention to any type of conspiracy theories. They're finding out all of this stuff. UAPs are real. This, So their minds have exploded and gone from not believing in anything to now being completely crazy in conspiracy land and untethered. So we have people like that right now, like with what happened with the Maui fires. There's a lot of weird stuff. We know people on the island, a number of people, but this stuff has grown and grown and the conspiracies have grown and grown to crazy, crazy levels. And right now with all I'm, I'm seeing the conspiracies exploding because people are like, well, if UAPs are real, what's to say these other conspiracies aren't. So, I mean, there's a certain segment of the population that's having that reaction. So we need to be able to give them direction and help them focus that energy a little bit more narrowly into a band of uh, being an activist. Right. And I have to share a lot more resources with people. I'll probably include them in links in the description of this video, um, how to get more connected and get more active. You don't have to pay to get connected with people. We're going to offer platforms to make it very easy to do that. And that's why we started Essential Works TV as a social platform first, because it's very important that we can actually, you know, work together it's not just complete separateness with 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 the, the awakening process, but um, hopefully we can avoid some of the pitfalls of um, that. I'll share more of this in the webinar: the pitfalls that happen with local communities and online communities. It's very easy to get people trying to um, disrupt what's going on. Um, so, I think we've learned our lessons by now to to make this a, a little bit easier for people to understand the path forward. Yeah, we've learned a very very uh, good about of lessons you know like 20 was it 2016 i tried to the unity in the community movement where i tried to unify everyone and get everyone out on the streets talking about free energy and just the stuff you know uh healing technologies just the stuff that you know the general population could listen to and buy into and and try to start a movement back then but it was infiltrated there were too many compromised people a part of it and uh, uh it collapsed and uh, it cost me and others dearly for even trying so this is a different approach this isn't unity in the community this is you by yourself or with a small little group of people that you know can't be compromised getting in there, rolling up your sleeves and becoming activists. And we're gonna give you information and we're gonna create like a group to where y'all can come together. And there could be some of you that have been activists for years in different ways and you can contribute and uh, you know we can build our knowledge on and ideas on how we can become activists and make a difference uh, in, in, in disclosure and making sure disclosure, there are scary aspects of disclosure. It is not a love and light kumbaya event. We're going to find out about millions of people being abducted off planet, never to come back. We're, we're going to find horrific, horrific truths revealed. What decides our timeline is how we respond to that information and uh, how we make sure that the good and the bad comes out and that the bad 
as bad as it is, isn't twisted and used as a tool to control us, put us into total fear, um, and to give away our rights all under the guise of security. So I think that this uh, uh, webinar is going to be one of the most important pieces of information that we have put out uh, in, in years. I agree. Everything's coming together. Everything I've, I've done seems like it's bringing us to this point of being of service in this way to the community. Agreed. Yeah, it's coming together very nicely. We had to learn those hard lessons in the past with compromised people in the community. Uh, the compromised people in the community, they're just going to want to sit back and tell stories anyway. So let them do that. Just ignore them. They can create their own little niche. And the people that are really interested in disclosure can start working for disclosure and uh, stop telling hopeful stories. Um, you know, that's what we're here to do is to actually be disclosure and to help others prepare uh, for this mind blowing event that's going to happen over the, you know, less than the next decade. <laughs>